Today, we'll learn how to make trendy YouTube thumbnails. Even if you're not a YouTuber, we'll go over some fun techniques that you can use to make your designs pop. Let's get started. If you want to follow along with me, you can download this image from the link in the video description. So to start out, we first need to create a document that's the right size for thumbnails. To do that, I'll go to the top of the screen to File, and then New. The right size for thumbnails can be found under the Web category. That size is 1280 by 720, so I'll go ahead and press on this, and then press Create. Now that we have our canvas, We'll need to get our image onto our canvas. I think this image is perfect for a thumbnail because it shows good expression on the face and it's against a blank wall, which will be perfect for creating a clean design. Before I bring this image onto the canvas though, I want to cut out the image from its background. To do this, I'll grab the selection brush tool then, using the bracket keys on my keyboard, I'll make the brush a bit bigger. Then, all I need to do is click and drag across our subject to make a selection. If you select too much, you can change the mode up in the context toolbar from Add to Subtract. At this point, the selection has been made, but I want the selection to be as smooth as possible. Later, I'm going to add an outline effect around this image, so the smoother I can make the selection, the less jagged that outline effect will look. So I'll go up to the context toolbar to press refine. This shows you a preview of what your selection looks like, and everything in red has not been selected. I'm going to bring up the smooth slider just a bit, which will smooth out the edges of our selection. I know this selection isn't perfect, but once we add our nice background and the outline effect, this won't matter too much. I'll go ahead and press apply. Then to get this image onto our new canvas, I'm going to press command or control C to copy it. Then I'll go to our canvas and press Command or Control V to paste it in. Then I'm just going to select the Move tool to resize the image. Next, I want to add some color to the background. To do this, I'm going to select the Rectangle tool. Then I'm going to click and drag across the canvas. So right now this is a white rectangle, to change the color, I'm just going to come up here to the color panel, and I'm going to choose a nice blue color. Then I'll click and drag our rectangle layer beneath our image layer so that it's underneath the image. Alright, I think that this color looks really nice, but I do want to add a little bit of color variation using the gradient tool. So I'm going to select the gradient tool. And then I'm going to click and drag from the center of our subject outward. You can see that we now have a linear gradient going from light on this side to dark over here. I like how this looks, but I think I want to change this gradient to a radial gradient, which will make it so that there's a circular lighter area right here, and then it gets darker as it goes outward. I'm going to adjust this color stop by pressing on it, and then I can make this even lighter over here. You can also adjust the midpoint to adjust how harsh this gradient is. I just want this to look subtle, and I think that's looking pretty nice. But I am going to change this color stop. I think I want this to be a bit lighter as well. Alright, I think that's looking nice. 
It's subtle, but it adds a little bit of variation, so I think that looks good. Now that we have a good start on our thumbnail, it's time to bring in some different elements. First, let's add some fun text. I've noticed a lot of thumbnails on YouTube like to use curved text, and I really like how that looks. Affinity recently added curved text to Affinity Photo, which I'm very excited about. To make curved text, all you need to do is select your shape or select the pen tool to create a path for your text. I'm going to select the pen tool. Then I'm just going to click and drag out a few points to make a curved line. This doesn't have to be perfect, we can adjust this later. Our next step for making curved text is to grab the artistic text tool. And you can see that the cursor currently has an A on it. If I hover over this path, it'll turn into a T. When you see that T, go ahead and press down. And now your cursor will follow this path as you type. To adjust the text, I'm just going to highlight it and then increase the font nice and large. Then I'm going to change the font. Feel free to use whatever font you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and use this one right here, IBM Plex Serif Medium. After changing the font and the size, now our text is upside down. <laughs> to fix that, I'm going to come to our pen tool and then click on this little gray triangle to bring up the node tool. This tool will let us change these points to give more space to our text and also adjust the curve if we like. Next, I want to add an outline around the text. To do this, I'm going to come to our FX icon down here and I'll press on that. Then I'll select the outline and check that on. Now we can bring up the radius and change the color. I'll change this color to white. I think that makes the letter stand out really nicely. I'll go ahead and close out of this now. So at this point, I'm going to make a few adjustments to the text. You may have noticed that with the text being curved like this, some of the letters are more spaced out and some are overlapping. This happens anytime you curve text. So when this happens, you need to make adjustments using the character panel. To do this, I'll select the artistic text tool and then I'm going to click in our text. Once you have the cursor flashing, go ahead and open up the character panel up in the context toolbar. Once you have this character panel up, you can begin to adjust your letters. Go ahead and scroll down to this point where it says positioning and transform. Then we can use this kerning category to adjust the spacing between each individual set of letters. So I'm going to hover over this box where it says 0%, and then I can just scroll with my mouse to bring these farther or closer together. I'll continue to do this for all of the letters. All right, now that the letters are better spaced, I can go ahead and adjust how this sits. I'm going to make this a bit larger and then using the move tool, I'm just going to move it so that it's slightly overlapping with our subject here. I'm also going to grab the node tool one more time and I'm just going to bring down this node a little bit. I want this text to be underneath our subject, so I'll click and drag this layer beneath the subject so that the head is overlapping on top of it. As a last step for making the text pop, I want to add a colorful version of the letters that's offset from the originals. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to press Command or Control J to duplicate these letters. 
Then I'm going to change some of their colors. To do that, I'm going to use the color picker to select this dark background color. Then I'll click on it to apply it to the fill of our letters. Then I'm going to make this color darker. I also want to change the outline color to match, so I'll press on the FX icon. Where it says color, I'll click, and then use the color picker to select this dark color that we just made. Then I'll click on that to apply it. Next, I'm going to click and drag this beneath our other text. And then I'll press on the Move tool. And I'll move this text down and to the right. You can see that this has added just kind of a fun text effect with a bit of a shadow. And you can change these colors up as much as you'd like. Next, we're going to bring in some clip art. So one place I like to go to find images with transparent backgrounds is Pixabay. They let you search for a term. And then once you have that term searched, you can go to images and then click on vector graphics. This will bring up images that have transparent backgrounds, which will be perfect so that we don't have to cut out this camera image to put it into our thumbnail. Once you have the image you like with its nice transparent background, just press free download, choose the size you'd like, make sure that it's a PNG file, and then you can press download and it will download for free. All right, so I have my images over here pulled up. I'm just going to go to my image and then press Command or Control C to copy it. Then I'll go back to my canvas and press Command or Control V to paste it in. Then I can resize the image. And I'll go do that with my other image. I'll press Command or Control C to copy this one and then bring it over with Command or Control V to paste it in. I'm just going to arrange these nicely. And I want the camera to sit on top of the Affinity logo, so I'll just click and drag this on top. I want all of these images, including our subject here, to pop. So I'm going to select all of them while holding down Command or Control on my keyboard. Once I have all of them selected, I'm going to click on the FX icon and I'm going to give them a nice outline. I'll change the color to white and then I'll bring up the radius. I also am going to add an outer shadow effect. I don't think this outline effect looks very good when it's so thick on our subject, so I'll individually click on this layer, and then click on the FX on its layer. Then I'll go back to the outline and decrease the radius. Now you can see that from our selection, we do have a bit of a jagged edge on this selection. Zoomed out as a YouTube thumbnail, this doesn't matter too much, but if you want to fix this, I want to give you an option you can use to make this look a bit cleaner. To do this, I'm going to add a new pixel layer. Then on this new pixel layer, I'm going to paint over this white outline to smooth it out. So I'll press B for my brush tool. I'll press D for default colors, and then I'll change my color to white. Now I can take my brush and smooth over these edges to make them look less jagged. You can actually hand draw every outline if you'd like, I just find it saves a little bit of time to apply the outlines beforehand. So I think this is looking really good. To finish this off, 
I want to add a few hand-drawn elements to our design. I think when people do this to their thumbnails, it just looks more personal and it's a nice touch. So I'm going to add another new pixel layer, and then I can paint on top of this to add any little details that I'd like. I'm going to draw in a few stars here and there to give it a little bit of sparkle. <laughs> And there we go, I think that's looking really good. At this point, you can make any other last minute adjustments you'd like. Maybe you want to move the text a little bit. Just make sure that you select both of these text layers if you're going to do that. You can move the camera and clip art around a little bit if you'd like. And I think this is looking pretty nice. Our beautiful thumbnail is now complete, and I hope that you learned some great tips that you can use on your own designs. If you want to learn our affinity workflow, then check out the free course below.